Okay, so off camera, I did some test cuts uh, using the fourth and fifth axis uh, and aluminum, and there was a lot of chatter. Uh, I'm not really happy with it, so I don't know what I expected, but um, yeah, it wasn't so great. Uh, I, I bought this uh, several years ago for a special project, ended up not using it, and I've just had it ever since, so I thought I'd hook it up. But uh, anyways, um, yeah, so I'm gonna replace it. Um, I got this uh, fourth axis off eBay, which um, feels incredibly rigid by comparison. And I have a self-centering vise here that I think I'm gonna need to make a plate to mount it. And um, this, uh, it's a 15 to one reduction, I believe. And this fits a 14 millimeter shaft uh, servo. So I have a 400 watt servo here I need to hook up. So yeah, so let me uh, start taking out some components and make some space for this. I guess first thing I'm gonna do is uh, get this uh, servo motor connected. So this should go right here. All right, cool. Oh man, this one's so much heavier. Okay, these uh, mounting slots uh, actually happen to line up perfectly. I got some longer bolts, and I think for now I'm just gonna get it as square as I can with this, and then I'll use a dial indicator later. Okay, it's mounted, and it feels really solid. So I guess I need to uh, open up the back and uh, get this servo drive installed. I'm totally out of room in my cabinet, so I took the last available spot here for this last servo drive, so that's gonna have to work. Okay, servo drive's all wired up, so I just need to set a couple parameters and we should be good to go. I configure the motor parameters and do a couple quick test cuts. But what I'm really more interested in is hooking up the self-centering vise. So I designed this mounting plate in Fusion 360. Uh, this will be the first actual CNC job on this machine, so let's see how it goes. All right, so far so good. Uh, let me do the next operation. Side one is done, so now I need to flip it over and take off all the extra material so I can do uh, and bring it down to size, then I can do uh, one operation on the second side. All right, I've got the part flipped over, and now I'm gonna face it off here and bring it down to length.
Well, that took a while, but here's the final part. I still need to tap four of the holes. Let's take a look and see how it fits. It feels like there's a little bit of play. I think I should have been more conservative with the dimension of that pocket. Because I overshot my dimension right here on this piece, and there's a little bit of play between the two plates, I think I'm going to use the center holes and make a pin uh, for alignment. So I have this chunk of aluminum here. I think I will bring it down to set right in here with a little lip and then a pin that sticks up so I can align the two when mounting them and make sure they're perfectly centered. Ooh, we were just there. All right, good, there's no play at all. All right, cool, let's flip this around and make the pin for the other side. Oh, good thing we stopped. We're there. Okay, so here's how I'm going to use it. Here's the part. Put it right there in the center. That's it. And that will line up there. Nice. All right, let's get this installed so we can try it out. to learn how to set up a file in Fusion 360 and then we will test this out. I modeled up this test cube real quick. I just wanted something where I could learn how to do the cam for milling into the four different faces. Uh, something simple. All right, I've got the stock loaded and roughly centered and roughly square to the vise. I need to get this uh, workpiece leveled. Um, I should use a dial indicator, but since this is just a test piece and I'm gonna be facing everything, I'm just gonna use a level here and see if I can get it close. Setting up the cam file turned out to be really easy. You just set up the origin to be on your center line and then you check this tool orientation box for your operation and then select whatever is the upside and it'll automatically turn the rotary to be in that position. So I just set it up to go around and face off all four sides and then contour off the front. Then I go around and make the pockets in all four sides and I cut a little relief contour on the back side uh, so I can do the chamfer. Then I go around and chamfer all four sides and finally remove uh, the rest of the material to get it down to a little tab holding it. All right, uh, I think it's all ready. Let's run this and see what happens. Okay, looks like my stock wasn't square after all.
Well, that turned out pretty cool. The surface finish isn't actually that bad considering all the amount of stick out ahead. And I thought that edge there was a misalignment, but it's actually, you can see there's a little rib there. I didn't quite go down far enough. Um, I haven't even trammed in the fourth axis yet, so um, I'm pretty happy with that. So cool. I'll consider that a success for a first test piece. All right, well, since I had four sides, I had to go ahead and finish the other two. Yeah, that was really fun. Uh, cool learning experience, and I'm super excited uh, that I can use this fourth axis now. Uh, it, wor it worked really awesome, uh, better than I was expecting, and fairly easy to set up the files too. As a side note, I'd really like to try out the continuous rotational cutting cam part of Fusion 360. Um, I already pay for Fusion 360, but uh, as a hobbyist, I can't justify the cost of this add-on extension. Um, so if anybody knows of any other uh, cheaper cam software that does this, uh, please let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate it.